Okay, so what's the market look like? In our simplified version of the modern economy, we can think about there being two groups, households, uh, who consist of individuals who provide the factors of production. The factors of production here are labor, capital, natural resources, and entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial ability. Okay, so households, they get paid for using their factors by selling them to firms in factor markets. So labor, that's gonna be all types of work, right? Uh, workers work and receive wages. Capital, uh, remember capital is used, uh, is a, an item used to produce other goods. So it could be a wheelbarrow, it could be uh, some kind of machine, um, computer, anything like that that's used to produce other goods. Natural resources, land, water, oil, etc. And then entrepreneurship is the ability to bring those factors of production together uh, to bring an item so that to the market so that it's actually useful in the market. Uh, on the other side of this, this is the other group. We have households. On the other side is firms. So they supply goods and services to product markets, and then households buy the products from the firms. So we have this circular flow diagram showing how households and firms are linked. All right, households give labor and uh, they own the natural resources and entrepreneurial ability, uh, supply that in factor markets and firms buy them, and then firms provide goods and services to household households. So uh, firms pay households for the use of their, uh, for the factors of production, so they get wages and return on capital, uh, that kind of thing, and then uh, households, of course, have to buy the goods and services, so they pay the firms for that. So simplified version of reality, right? We don't have a government here. There's no financial system, no foreign mark, no foreigners included in this. We'll add those in as we go along. Okay, so a free market is one with few government restrictions on how a good or service can be produced or sold or on how a factor of production can be employed. And it's gonna be these free market economies that have been much more successful than centrally planned economies. There was a great debate about this among economists, um, especially before, obviously before the Soviet Union fell in 1991. Uh, a key article on this uh, uh, is uh, Frederick Hayek's, F.A. Hayek's The Use of Knowledge in Society. That'd be a great place to go if you wanna look a little deeper about why markets are gonna be better than centrally planned economies and why centrally planned economies are, are destined to fail. So put your thinking caps on if you want to look a little deeper, it's in the course library. So why would markets, why are they better able to perform? Well, one thing is uh, that voluntary exchange that we talked about before is people look out for their own, inter own interest. Uh, they're able to specialize and we saw those gains from trade, right? So Adam Smith in his an inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations, he says that specialization is that, that, that key. He's not the first to say it, but he's the one we think about. And he says that specialization is limited by the extent of the market. So as the market grows, as there are more opportunities for, for change, uh, for uh, exchange, there is going to be more specialization. And with more specialization, there's more gains from trade. So we have people who can specialize in producing a very specific uh, item, a very specific good or service. And as the market expands, greater specialization is possible, greater gains from trade. Now, it may not be immediately obvious that markets are gonna do better than centrally planned economies, right? We think, oh, surely some smart person somewhere would be able to figure out you know, how much of this and that we should produce, what prices we should charge. And really the marvel of the market is in that coordination. We have this, uh, there's really a, a beauty to it. Um, th this coordination that results is the result of human action, but not of human design. Another quote from uh, Hayek. Uh, as individuals pursue their own rational self-interest. So flexible prices, they allow for coordination. Prices serve as, as signals, uh, how much to produce, um, how in, uh, as individuals make decisions of, with the trade-offs that they face. And so this is that uh, indivisible, in, invisible hand that, uh, that that terminology comes from Adam Smith, of course. Um, so that as individuals pursue, pursue their own rational self-interest, they collectively end up satisfying the wants of consumers as well. Okay, a story of the market system in action. This is just like the link that I posted for uh, iPencil, if you wanna watch that video. It's uh, pretty interesting, same, same concept here that um, so many 
individual pieces go into making an iPad, it's a, it's a marvel of coordination, market coordination. Okay, the role of the entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, like I said, he is somebody who brings together he or she, who brings together the factors of production, land, labor, and capital to produce goods and services. So uh, this is this is really these are really innovators. Um, that quote from Henry Ford there is a good one, right? So with an entrepreneur, you think of somebody like Henry Ford. You think of somebody like Steve Jobs. Um, they are risk takers. Um, and it's it's through them that economic growth is really happening through that uh, that innovation and exploration. I should say the entrepreneur and the inventor aren't necessarily the same person, right? Steve Jobs did not invent the personal computer. He did not invent the cell phone, but he found the way of applying that technology in a way that consumers would want that would be beneficial for consumers. So sometimes they could be the same the same people, inventor and the and the entrepreneur, but that's not necessarily the case. So a uh, key thing here is that government policies encouraging entrepreneurship are likely to increase economic growth and raise standards of living. It's through entrepreneurship that putting together those factors of production that economies are able to grow. So what is the environment for uh, economic growth? What's the best environment for economic growth? What's the role of government? So in a free market, government doesn't restrict how firms produce and sell goods or how they employ factors of production. but the key role for the government is a sound judicial system, a legal environment that allows the market system to succeed. So this, the big things here are protection of property rights so that uh, when people steal from you, uh, you can get it back, right? Because if, you, if, you, if your property rights are not secure, you have no incentive to invest, take risk, to innovate. Uh, it just becomes a predatory system. So property rights are very important. This is that individuals or firms have the exclusive use of their property, including the right to buy or sell it. And along with that would be the enforcement of contracts. So that's that's one of the reasons the U.S. is able to, to do well is because uh, of the sound legal environment that we have. Okay, here's another example of the Wizard of Oz. You can check that out um, as we look at intellectual property rights. Uh, intellectual property rights encourage innovation, but at the same time, uh, there there are pluses and minuses with that. So I think that example is in your book. You can check that out if you want to. Okay, the production possibilities frontier should never bow inward, right? Because we're we're looking at trade-offs, um, increasing or at least constant opportunity cost. Bowing inward would would mess up that that trade-off that that we would expect to see there. Uh, PPF is a positive tool, not a normative tool. It just shows us what can be produced, not what should be produced. Uh, we looked at absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Just because someone is better or worse at everything, that doesn't mean that trade with them cannot be beneficial, right? So even though the U.S. is a huge economy, it's really good at producing uh, technological, you know, uh, technology and services. It can still be a great um, benefit to the United States to engage in trade with other countries. Uh, trade is always going to be mutually advantageous, right? If it's a voluntary exchange, people are only going to pursue uh, exchanges that are that they consider worthwhile. Free markets, in general, are going to raise the standard of living, uh, promoting economic growth, but there is, of course, a significant role for government. They have to provide a sound legal environment to allow that uh, economic growth to happen.